Hey YouTube, this is Prince from Desi Programmer. Welcome back to another exciting Flutter video. And in this video, we are going to talk about persistent data storage in Flutter. Now there are three different ways using which we can work with persistent data storage in Flutter. The first one will be a simple text and JSON file. Second one, working with shared preferences. The third one will be working with databases. And in this video, we are going to talk about databases in Flutter. We will be talking about SQLite, which is SQLite in Flutter. In this video, we'll talk about creating database, inserting data in it, querying data, querying a specific data, deleting data and updating data. Now, as you can see right here, I have this very basic application up and running. We have this couple of buttons and the text are self-explanatory what they're going to do. Now, to make sure that things are pretty simple, we will create, we have created a very different file named as dbhelper. dot. This will contain all the code to the basic code for creating a database giving us a database that is a getter that will return a database and then all the code methods which will help us in inserting data, retrieving data, updating and deleting data. I have also posted this simple snippet on my GitLab account. I have posted the link in the description and this contains this source code of the file that will help with working with databases. So the next time if you just want to work with database, you can come right here, copy this entire code which contains all the code to the basic code and then these are the functions which are an implementation of those codes. So basically after this video you will understand what this code contains and what you have to copy, what you have to change and what you have to keep as it is. Now to start working with SQLite you have to add these two dependencies in your pubspec.yaml file then save this and make sure that you have both of these available. If the installation is successful then you can simply import the SQLite in your dbhelper.dot file. We will now create a class named database helper class and we need a few variables to work with. We need the database name, a database version and then a table name. Now all these variables are final variables. My database name is persons.db and my table name is my table. Now we need our columns so that we can work with our database column and I will have just three columns right here so that things are not so simple as well as not much complex. I'll name, the, name them as column ID, column name and column age. Now we will have a database variable named as database. So we create a getter named database which will be asynchronous and hence will return a database as future. But here is an issue as the database may or may not exist. So if the database exists, which is if the database is not null, then we will return a database. But if it doesn't exist, then we will have to create one. I'll name that as init database. So as you can see, I have used a wait because the init database 2 is going to be an asynchronous function. So I have to say init database async and the first thing that we need right here is an application directory. So we have this documents directory which is a directory variable and this will return us the application document directory. All that we have to do now is to join our document directory path with the database name and hence we can create a database at that particular path. So I say string path that's equal to join documents directory dot path and database name. Now this join and directory may give errors. So the directory will come from dot io and the join will come from the path library since it's not available. I have to just import that. Now we have to just use the open database method which will ask for a path, the version and an on create. So I say return await open database because that too is going to be asynchronous as the open database will try to create database if the database is not available. Now we have an on create function which will take a database and an version. It will be asynchronous will simply return a future and here we are going to execute some SQL code which will be db.execute and I will create a table which will come from our table variable. The first thing that we have is in column ID, it, it will be an integer, a primary key and we don't need to use auto increment here, it will take care of that automatically. The next one will be a column name, text, not null and the last one will be a column age which again will be integer and not null. We are almost done with setting up our database and returning a database and one last thing before we proceed to writing our methods for insert, query and everything. We have to first set a database instance to be created using a private constructor. Strictly speaking, in very simple terms, this makes sure that instead of creating multiple instances, it always returns the same single instance of the database. 
So all that I have to say is that database helper dot private constructor and the database final database helper instance will come from the private constructor. Well, now we are good to go. All that we have to do is to now write our methods for inserting data and everything. And what's more important here is to understand what we are accepting as a parameter and what we are returning for our functions. So the first one that we are going to code will be an insert function. It will re accept a parameter which will be a map of a string and dynamic values and will return the ID of the inserted row. So we simply say that this function named as insert which accepts a map of string and dynamic as row is asynchronous will return a future value which will be integer. Here we say the database db will be instance of database which will again be an await function because it's asynchronous and then we have to return using this db dot insert which will insert table and row here we can either insert using raw query or we can just use this simple pre-built functions. So the pre-built function of insert will just ask for the table name and a row which we are providing and hence it's done. Now with this insert function created, we have to just create a database helper instance in our main.dot file and I will name that as db helper. With this db helper created, all that I have to do is to code an insert data function which will be asynchronous. We have to create this map of a string and dynamic. I'll name this as row. I will set the column name to my name that's Prince and I will set the age to 20. And then I have to just call this dbhelper.insert which will be await as it's asynchronous. It will return an ID and then I will print that ID. So basically if we get one that means our function is working correctly. I'm simply working with these static values in this video because I don't want to extend things further by creating these forms and all. We'll talk about that in the next video where we'll be using these concepts that we have learned in this video about databases to further create our to-do application. Now I have to just call this function insert data in this insert and if I just paste this, if I save this and now since we have coded this another class which is database helper and all First, we will have to rebuild the application so that all the changes are reflected correctly. Now that we have rebuilt the application, if I click on this insert button, then you will see we get this number one in the console, which means we have successfully created our database, our database table, and we have even inserted a single row in the database. Now let's code the core query function and I will name this as query all rows because we will be querying every row in the database. Now here we don't need any parameter and this will return a list of such map which will be a map of a string and dynamic as a value. So I will name this as query all rows. It will return a future value which will be a list of map and which will be a list of maps of a string and dynamic. It will be asynchronous. Again here we need the database db, an instance of the database and we have to simply say return away db.query table and this function will just return everything as simple as it is. Now with this core method being coded, all that I have to do is to go to our main.dart file. I'll code this query all function named as query all. It will again be asynchronous and here we will accept the returned values in a, an in a variable named all rows and then for each value in that all row we will just print the row value. Let's just simply call this query all function in our query simple query button. Just paste this save is and now just pay attention to the debug console when I click on the query button. This will give us this particular map. Now here we have the ID of one. The name is Prince and the age is 20. And this is the value that we just inserted. Now to make sure that this is working, let's insert another value. I'll name this as DC. I'll set the age to let's say 5. I'll save this and when we click on the insert button, this will give us the value 2. So now when I click on the query button, we have two values. The first one is the first value that we inserted and the second one is the second value that we inserted. Very easy, right? Now let's talk about the query specific function. Here in this function, we are going to do a specific query based on some conditions. Now this two will return this future, which will be a list of such maps. 
I'll name this as query is specific and here again we are not asking for any values although you can pass that remember these parameter that we are passing right here are optional this is that code that we get from your from our sqlite dot dot this is the function that we are coding so it doesn't mean that you have to pass this the reason why i'm doing this or i'm saying that you have to pass these variables is because now you can just call this function from any file you can pass a row and that will be inserted the same way if you want to pass something just pass that in query specific I'll pass, let's say I'll pass an integer, which will be, I will name that as age because I'm going to pass an age. Now here again, we need this database instance. So I'll just copy and paste this. And now here there are two methods. Right now, let's talk about that raw query and normal query. Now using raw query, we can execute raw SQL code to get a result. And we can even execute normal SQL code to get a result. Now here let's try to code something as i will say var res and this return will come this return will be all those values where age is let's say greater than 18. so when i'll be calling this function i will pass a value of 18 and here all that i have to say if i'm going to use simple db query then i have to just say db dot query the same thing that we used above and here we have our table now i'm going to pass extra variables too so the first one is where now this will talk about the condition and the condition is that the age should be greater than or equal to the question mark now the question mark is the argument so we say where args and the argument is always a list now here in this list we have a single argument which is age and then with this done all that i have to do is to return this rest so i'm saying return this rest which is simply a result now i have to just call this function in my main dot dot file so i will just simply say i'll just copy this everything and i'll paste right here i will just name this as instead of query all i'll name this as query is specific there won't be any issue this too will be query specific and here i have to pass a value so i'll be passing 80. now see just because we have two columns right now we'll be getting only a single column as an out single row as an output i'm sorry i'm not too good with this row and column technical terms of databases so here basically here too we can we are going to expect a list so i will leave this as it is i have to just call this query specific from my query specific button and now simply if i click on this query specific i should get a single row right where the age is 20 which is obviously greater than 18 easy and working pretty well but now let's talk about that raw sql query because if you want to do something more with the database if you want to write complex queries so obviously there too you can use the where and where args but let's say if you're not comfortable with that then and if you are very good with databases then you can simply execute your raw query so i'll just comment this out and i will say that here the war rest is going to be await db dot raw query right and the raw query will again be our simple sql statement so i'm simply saying select all from my underscore table which is the table name and here i'm saying where age is you know greater than or equal to the question mark and here we have to just pass the argument as a string remember if there are multiple arguments sorry as a list and remember if there are multiple arguments you have to pass one after the another in the same order how you are expecting them in that sql query obviously i have to pass the single value which is a's and that's it the, now even even now when i press on this query specific it will return the same value if i say less then i will get that another row which we inserted which is they see so as you can see we can here execute come on we can here ex okay sorry i have to use shift not alt so now as you can see we can either execute raw sql queries or the function which is there so for those who are good with databases you have this this option too and for those who just want to write simple code of databases like insert query and all you are good with this now the next thing that we should talk about will be a delete database here too it will return an integer as a future and i will name this as delete data it will accept an 
a value as a parameter the reason why i'm saying it will accept a value because obviously we won't be deleting everything at once you may want to delete based on some condition here too we will have this database dt db which will be an instance of the database and all, all that i'm saying is that await db dot delete we have the table name the condition is that the id should match so if the id is equal to the given id then it will just delete this and i will return the rest which will be the number of rows affected Now in the main dot dot file, I will simply code this function named delete, which will be asynchronous. And here I'm expecting a value which will come from db helper dot delete data. And I'm passing the value. Let's say I'm passing value two because I want to delete the second row. And I will just print that. All that we have to do is to go here in our near our delete button. I have to just paste that, save it, and now when I click on the delete, pay attention to the console, I get one. Now this means that a single row has been affected, which is a second row. Now if I click on query, it will give me a single row, which is right here. Again, let me just click on insert and query so that both of them are available. Now the last but not the least function, which will be update. So in this update function, I'll name this as update, which will be a core method. It will again return a future integer, which will be the number of rows affected i'll name this as update it will expect an integer id as a parameter so here what i'm doing is that i'm passing an id and i'm saying that just update the values of their particular id so we have the database db which will be an instance of the database and we have to say db.update the table name and here we have to pass all those values that we are going to update remember that uh, here since we have name so you have to just pass the name as the first value, which will be the column name and then the value of our column. And then again, the age, which will be the value. Then we have the where, which will be the condition, which is if the ID is equal to the provided ID. And then we have the where arguments, which will be ID and we just return the rest. So as you can see, all that I'm doing is that I'm simply updating the name from DC to DC programmer and the AS to two. So in the main dot file, I have to code the simple function named update data, which will be asynchronous and will again call this db helper dot update. I'll pass the ID that I have to update, which is two, and then I will print the number of rows affected. Now I have to just call this update data function near my update button. I mean, on the on press drop my update button let me clear the console and now let's play close attention when i say query i have two rows available now the number in the number in the second row the name is dc and the age is five when i click on update it says that a single row has been affected so now when i click on query we see that in the second row the name has been updated to dc programmer and the age has been updated to two so that's pretty much it from my side in this video. We have talked about databases in Flutter, SQL, ITE. Now, obviously, there are many methods out there using which you can do this. This is the one that I'm using and I want to use because it's not just easy, it just does the job. And here, as you can see, again, if I try to wrap up everything in, in as soon as possible, we have the database name, the database words, and the table, which will be your table name, the columns right here, and then here we try to create, we try to return a database and since that is not available, we try to initiate a database. So first we need to get the document directory and there we create a path where we have to get the database and then we execute some SQL code which will create a database. And these, these are the code the basic function which help with insert, query all rows, query specific row, delete data and update data. And as I have already said, I have posted everything on my snippet. So you can just go right there, copy this entire code whenever you want to use this and just make sure that you change those couple variables according to your use. So I'll catch you up soon in the next video talking more about Flutter, creating more project. But till then, keep coding, keep loving, keep sharing and stay safe. Peace.